Hi, uh, my name is Frank Levy and uh, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, and I am not over, I didn't come over here in 1847 on a coffin ship. No, I'm not that, quite that old yet. But uh, I came over here in 1953. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier how people come over here because they had to and people come over here because they wanted to. I come under the classification. I come over to the United States in 1953 because I wanted to. My wife, Eileen, uh, would be, I say, one of the people. She didn't exactly want to come. Uh, she didn't want to leave her, her mother and father, but uh, she come because I was coming. My son, Anthony, was a year and a half, and uh, he was along because he had no choice, but um, we came here uh, by invitation from a second cousin of my wife who uh, lived in Iowa, uh, farmed and uh, retired from the telephone company, and he came to Ireland and um, visited with us in uh, Dublin uh, where I worked. I was a meat cutter with a large um, supermarket chain, uh, in our, the largest supermarket chain at that time and uh, I was a meat cutter, but um, he um, talked about the United States and I said, well, I'm looking at emigrating to Canada or Australia or Rhodesia. And uh, he said, why don't you come to the US of A? I said, because it's impossible to get in. He um, had a good attorney who worked with the Nuremberg trials and was familiar with bringing displaced people into uh, United States from uh, Tito's Yugoslavia and um, uh, to make a long story short I was here in six months uh, all, all the way to the state of Iowa uh, and um, landed there uh, with probably uh, less than three figures in uh, money in my pocket uh, and um, got a job right away cutting meat uh, Leaving Ireland at that time uh, was just after World War II, and of course we grew up. I grew up during the rationing period of food and uh, gasoline, so there was no cars in Ireland uh, for public use except by the, uh, the doctors, uh, the priests, the politicians, and the police. Uh, but there wasn't too many cars for ordinary people because there was no uh, gasoline, petrol we call it over there, uh, for use. So uh, I leave, left Ireland uh, just knowing how to ride a bicycle. So uh, coming over and getting a job uh, eight to ten miles from um, where I lived at the time in uh, Iowa, uh, I had to learn to drive a car. And I did. Uh, it was uh, fun. Uh, I did learn. Uh, got an old car at the time, it was 1939 uh, car, and of course by in 60 days I had torn out the cl clutch two times, uh, no problem. Uh, but uh, eventually I did that uh, driving and uh, uh, continued on and got, got my first car. Well, just go back a little bit, when I got here first and meeting the family, an extended family, um, the, their children ga gathered around us as we were sitting chatting with them and they were looking at us uh, with a little bit of uh, disappointment and uh, the, one of them whispered to their mother, uh, Mom, where are our greenhorns? Because uh, be waiting for us to come over they kept talking about our, our coming and they referred to us as greenhorns and the kid ref uh, remembered that part of it. So. Uh, Anyway, we explained to him that the Greenhorns was not uh, what we were, but uh, anyway, going forward, uh, after learning to drive my car, I, uh, like I say, tore out the clutch a few times, um, and uh, driving back and forth nine, ten miles to my work uh, in Iowa at the time, I um, uh, got the clutch fixed for the second time, and uh, took it down to my uh, uh, the supermarket where I worked and parked it out in front and went in and done my work and uh, then left to leave uh, at quitting time and uh, everybody in the store was coming to the door and saying goodbye to me. The tavern next door, they were all at the window waving at me saying goodbye to me and I couldn't understand it. So I got in my car and turned the key on and everything exploded underneath the hood. 
And of course, I jumped out of the car and I, I broke up uh, Olympic time going down the street, getting away from my car. But they had cherry bombed it, and that's the reason it exploded. And of course, that was another welcome to America Greenhorn. But uh, anyway, that was so. Uh, going forward, uh, I grew with the town with the company and uh, went to work with a chain store, a supermarket, and um, worked for them for uh, four years. Uh, I came over in '53, uh, three years in 1956 uh, with them. Um, uh, uh, a nice uh, banker, a helpful banker, and some friends. I got the money and opened uh, a meat market, a locker plant, which was uh, in Iowa, where you uh, slaughter people's lamb, uh, sheep, or and pork and uh, cattle, and um, you um, uh, for them and I cut them up for them, and uh, we store it in our freezer and then already take it home to their home freezer. And uh, opened that, brought my two brothers over from uh, Ireland. Uh, they come about three years after, and we held uh, that meat market there for 17 years. And um, uh, we're pretty well known in the area, Marshalltown. And um, uh, we sold a building to uh, the school board for they want to extend their library. And we went our separate ways. And uh, I went uh, working for a chain packing company and uh, or a slaughterhouse packing company, and advanced to sales manager. And um, my son Anthony uh, had emigrated at, at, at 20 years old to uh, Arizona to work uh, for a chain store down here in uh, Arizona. And coming to visit him um, uh, to see him in a, after our horrible winters in Iowa. Uh, I said to my wife, we're leaving at one time, would you like to live here? And she said, love it. So in 1979, I moved here and um, uh, still living uh, the American dream. My, uh, my children, except for the last two, uh, were raised and out working. The last two graduated from high school in 79. And with the help of my son, Anthony, I got them. They both got scholarships to Arizona State one for gymnastics, one for wrestling. And uh, we moved down here in 1979, looking for a job. Uh, our intention, I was 51, and our intention was to work for 10 years and then uh, work, uh, move back to Ireland for the summers and come back to Arizona for the winters. Couldn't find a job that I, for with to get the money I thought I was worth, and um, so opened or started to do uh, something for myself. Uh, no bank would give me any money and uh, to a, to make a large company, so started selling uh, meat, uh, the offal of meat, which livers, hearts, tongues, tails, tripe, stuff, anything under a dollar a pound and opened that and started doing that and grew from there. And going forward quickly, uh, expanded and uh, did finally get the um, money uh, or uh, a backing from a company in uh, Detroit and um, started uh, a meat company larger than the liver, hearts, tongues and tails. And going forward, uh, my family joined me, uh, my older family joined me from different parts of the country and joined and uh, we expanded it to uh, San Diego, uh, Denver, uh, Kansas City and Orlando and um, it just grew from there and uh, we named it Harvest Meat Company. Uh, I retired uh, at 65 and have lived a good life ever since. The help of my family, the company is still the, still growing and uh, continue to grow. That as we sit here today, uh, our, our you're eating your evening meal. Uh, Thirty million people are eating protein from our company uh, all over the United States. Um, I became active uh, from early day coming down here in the Irish community. Uh, 
was involved in the starting of the parade uh, from uh, uh, an early an early date actually uh, we the parade grew out of uh, the hunger strike of the Irish uh, people in the north of Ireland and uh, we uh, paraded uh, around the state house uh, uh, co uh, complaining or uh, protesting that uh, uh, Margaret Thatcher's uh, uh, letting, letting the uh, hunger strikers die and then uh, we sat and drank a few beers afterwards and started talking about the parade and that's how the parade started in 1981-82 what we're seeing here today is, is an outgrowth of that and uh, it's, it's continuing out to grow uh, we were young people back 30 40 years ago 35 40 years ago and uh, now it's been taken over by another group of young people uh, and continues I think it's, it's going to continue to achieve uh, greatness going forward going back on my life um, I was born in a small <coughs> town in um, in rural Mead my father was a meat cutter there and uh, of course we all followed his back his father was a cold uh, a cold uh, a a retail or wholesale coal salesman uh, delivering bags of coal to the Dublin the people in the suburbs of Dublin uh, back at the 1880s 1890s and um, he got a, he got recruited and got an opportunity to um, go to South America to uh, as a, it was opening up as a great economic boon and um, the Rome the Catholic Church uh, thought Ireland would be a good place to recruit people Catholics to go to South America and my father was my grandfather was recruited to go there while he was there my father was born in South America and while he was there his brother who was on the home farm in County Meath died Back at that time, we was under British rule, the second son would inherit the land, not the widow. Now that changed for later on years when Ireland got the free state because the women couldn't. So my grandfather come back from South America, brought my father with him, and that's how my father ended back in Ireland. And uh, he followed the meat trade and, uh, and then was in World War one uh, with the Irish Guards Regiment and got wounded there and uh, was in the military hospital in uh, Ireland uh, recovering and uh, met my mother who was uh, who nursed them and shaved them and then they fell in love and married them and that's how they got together I was the last the sixth of um, uh, of six children and I was born uh, five months six months after my father passing away uh, he was a diabetic and uh, my mother raised us uh, in uh, in Dublin we moved to Dublin I was raised, went to school there and uh, the rest of my story you heard about it um, I am now um, at uh, I guess I'm 90 years old I'm enjoying um, uh, definitely uh, the American um, Life. I've, I've lived I've lived the American dream no question about that and uh, raised in my family a great family with my wife we both lived uh, went back to Ireland celebrating our 50th and went back and celebrated our 60th back in Ireland in our home place and uh, then it's uh, 62 years after we were married my wife left for a better place and uh, so uh, Going forward, I'm enjoying every day of my life. Near since. over and more in a county Galway, a pleasant evening in a month of June. I spied a damsel, she was rare and handsome, and round her shoulders was a Galway shawl. Oh, she wore no jewels, no costly diamonds. No pain, no powder, no none at all. She wore a bonnet with a ribbon on it around her shoulders. 
the Galway Shoal. We kept on walking, we kept on talking, till our father's cottage came into view. She said, come in, sir, and meet my father, and pray, play for him, the foggy do. As she wore no jewels, no costly diamonds, no pain, no powder, no none at all. Oh, she wore a bonnet with a ribbon on it, and round her shoulders was a Galway shawl.